Ever found yourself struggling to retain information while studying? It's a common problem, one that can feel like you're trying to catch water in a sieve. It's not just about memory either. Other common study challenges include a lack of focus, where the world outside your textbook seems infinitely more interesting, or procrastination, that sneaky thief of time that always promises you'll do it later. Then there's the difficulty in retaining information. You read a page, then read it again, and still, the words seem to slip away like sand through your fingers. It's frustrating, isn't it? But here's the deal. These aren't unique problems. They're battles faced by countless students each and every day. The key to overcoming these challenges? Effective study techniques. They can be your secret weapon in the war against the study struggle. If you face these challenges, you're not alone. But guess what? There are effective ways to tackle them. The first step to effective studying lies in planning. Imagine this, you've been given an assignment that's due in two weeks. You think, oh I have plenty of time, and then suddenly, it's the night before the deadline and you're scrambling to finish. Stressful, isn't it? This is where planning comes in. Creating a study schedule is like preparing a roadmap for your academic journey. It's about setting a clear path from where you are to where you want to be. When you have a plan, you know exactly what you need to do, and when you need to do it. No more last-minute rushes or sleepless nights. Planning your study time can significantly reduce stress. With a plan in place, you're not constantly worrying about what you should be doing or whether you're forgetting something. Instead, you can focus on the task at hand, knowing that you're on track. It's about working smarter, not harder. But planning isn't just about reducing stress. It's also a powerful productivity tool. With a well-organized study schedule, you can make the most of your time. You can prioritize tasks, break down larger projects into manageable chunks, and ensure that you're making steady progress. And let's not forget about setting clear, achievable goals for each study session. This is crucial. When you know exactly what you're working towards, it's easier to stay focused and motivated. Each completed task feels like a small victory propelling you forward. Think of planning as laying the foundation for your studies. It's the first step, but it's a vital one. Without a solid foundation, everything else becomes much more difficult. So, how do you create a study schedule? Start by assessing your workload. Break it down into smaller tasks. Decide when you'll work on each task, taking into account your most productive times of day. Be realistic about how much you can achieve in each session and remember to schedule in breaks. And most importantly, stick to your plan. Remember, a well-planned study schedule is your first step towards academic success. Studying for hours on end without a break? That's a recipe for burnout. Let's take a moment to consider the Pomodoro Technique. This method, created by Francesco Cerillo in the late 80s, has been a game-changer for many. It's a simple yet effective approach. You set a timer for 25 minutes, focus on your work, and when the timer rings you take a 5-minute break. After every fourth Pomodoro you take a longer break of 15 to 30 minutes. The beauty of the Pomodoro Technique is that it trains your brain to focus for short periods and helps you keep your attention sharp. The breaks in between also provide a moment for your brain to rest and assimilate the information. Now you might wonder, why take breaks? Well, contrary to what we may believe, our brains are not designed for prolonged periods of intense focus. Studies have shown that regular breaks can significantly improve focus and retention. Imagine your brain as a sponge. If you keep pouring water on it continuously, it will soon reach its saturation point and start to leak. But if you give it time to absorb the water and then squeeze it out, it will be ready to soak up more. That's exactly how our brains work when we take regular breaks during study sessions. Furthermore, taking care of your mental health during study sessions is paramount. Studying continuously without breaks can lead to stress and anxiety, which can have a detrimental effect on your overall performance. Breaks provide an opportunity to relax, refresh, and recharge. You can take a short walk, meditate, or even do a quick workout. Not only will this help reset your mind, but it also promotes physical well-being. In conclusion, breaks are not just about stepping away from your books or screens. They are about giving your brain the much-needed rest it deserves. They are about maintaining a healthy balance between work and rest. They are about ensuring that you are at your best, mentally and physically, when you're studying. So, don't forget to take a break. Your brain will thank you. Ever tried to study by simply reading your notes over and over again? Maybe you've found this method to be less than effective. That's because successful studying requires more than just reading. It calls for active learning, a method that involves engaging with the material on a deeper level. 
So, what exactly is active learning? In essence, it's an approach to education that goes beyond passive reading or listening. It's about making connections, questioning the material, and really getting involved with what you're studying. Active learning is proactive, not reactive. It's not about waiting for information to come to you, but rather seeking it out and making it your own. Now let's dive into some specific active learning techniques. One of the most effective methods is summarizing information. After reading a section of your textbook or listening to a lecture, try to put what you've learned into your own words. This not only ensures you understand the content, but also makes it easier to remember. After all, it's much easier to recall something you've personally rephrased than something you've simply read. Another active learning technique is teaching others. This might seem counterintuitive, but the act of explaining a concept to someone else can solidify your own understanding. It forces you to think critically about the material and identify any gaps in your knowledge. Plus, it's a great way to help your classmates. Finally, self-quizzing is an excellent way to engage in active learning. Instead of passively reading through your notes, test yourself on the material. This not only helps you identify areas where you might be struggling, but also improves your ability to recall information when it counts, such as during a test. So, next time you sit down to study, remember, don't just read, engage, summarize the information, teach someone else, quiz yourself. These techniques will help you to truly understand the material, not just memorize it. Active learning, not passive reading, is the key to effective studying. Your study environment matters more than you might think. It's the unsung hero of successful studying, often overlooked but playing a crucial role in how well we absorb information. The environment around us can either foster our concentration or fragment it, making it either a friend or foe to our learning process. Imagine trying to study in a noisy, chaotic place. You're constantly interrupted by various sounds and it's nearly impossible to focus on the task at hand. This is because our brains are designed to respond to stimuli, and in a noisy environment there are just too many stimuli pulling us in different directions. On the other hand, a quiet, well-lit study space can do wonders for our concentration. When the environment is serene, our minds can focus on one task, and one task only, studying. Good lighting is also crucial. It reduces strain on our eyes, making it easier to read and comprehend the material. So, how can we create an environment conducive to studying? First and foremost, keep your study space clean and organized. Clutter can be a visual distraction, and an organized space can help you feel more focused and productive. Second, consider using noise-canceling headphones or earplugs. They can help reduce unwanted noise and allow you to create your own quiet study zone, even in a bustling environment. Third, make sure your study space is well lit. Natural light is ideal as it is easy on the eyes and can boost your mood. But if that's not possible, make sure you have sufficient artificial light that illuminates your workspace without causing glare. And lastly, personalize your space. Add a plant for a touch of nature, use comfortable seating, or decorate your space in a way that makes you feel relaxed and motivated. Remember the goal is to create an environment that encourages focus, minimizes distractions and makes studying a more enjoyable process. When you tailor your environment to your study needs, you set yourself up for success. Create an environment that encourages focus, and you'll find studying becomes much easier. So, what have we learned about effective study techniques? Well, first up, remember the power of planning. Having a clear roadmap of what to study and when to study it can significantly boost your productivity and reduce stress. Next, we discuss the importance of taking regular breaks. Contrary to popular belief, your brain needs time to recharge and process information. So, don't hesitate to step away from your study materials from time to time. Then we explored the concept of active learning. Engaging with the material whether through discussions, practice problems or teaching others, can help consolidate your understanding and improve recall. Finally, we touched on the significance of crafting the right environment for study. A calm, distraction-free zone can do wonders for your concentration levels. Implement these tips and watch your study sessions become more productive. Happy studying! If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.